Hey guys, so we're back. They're cut out. Got both pieces cut out. They, uh, for the most part, line up. I, I all have a little bit of cleaning up to do. That's that's normal. Uh, but the one thing I have to deal with, if you notice, they flop about a bit. So we're gonna do something here that will uh, give it a little bit more form. Now, depending on the material you use, like if you use uh, hard insulation foam, that stuff's not gonna move around as much. So it's gonna stay pretty solid. So that's the big benefit from that. So you make something this size and it's gonna look nice and clean. Uh, if you do it out of cardboard, once again, you may have to sandwich something in between the two pieces of cardboard, or if you just do uh, get really thick cardboard, there is thick, really solid cardboard that you can cut out of that will stay very nice and uh, formed. And also, like, this stuff will kind of flop about a bit, but I'll hold it straight up, as you can see, it's not going, a, uh, going about too much. And think about this, you're making this for kids, they're going to whack somebody with it. <sighs> No matter what you say, they're going to whack somebody with it, and something that flops around isn't going to do much. So this is an example of a sword that was made out of a similar material to this. Uh, this stuff is actually a lot softer than what I uh, made this out of, and you can see that this is uh, not going anywhere. It's not flopping, and it's not flopping over itself like this one does, as soon as I hold it. So the reason this one isn't flopping about is that what I've actually done is I've actually taken uh, tie wire. Uh, it's the same stuff that uh, rebar guys use. Now you can also improvise um, if you don't want to pick this stuff up. It's not super expensive at the hardware store. Uh, but you can also use a coat hanger. Uh, basically you're going to uh, mangle and reshape your uh, coat hanger. And where it's actually going to happen is it's actually going to go in the middle here. Now uh, because of the, the piece that I've created here, there's... Uh, a very thin neck here that I have to be careful of when I'm uh, putting this in. So I'm just trying to find uh, a good spot to kind of set this in. And this is, you're going to have to fight with this stuff. It doesn't necessarily go everywhere you want it to. So I have to fight with it a bit. Uh, but this will create the uh, that level of uh, rigidity that you want with, uh, with the props so that it's not flopping all over the place. So th my next step here is actually to get this stuff ready to get glued together. Now I'm going to use barge cement for this because it's the best stuff to use, but you can use this Super 77. You could probably even use Mod Podge, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of trying to do it that way. This stuff is really good. Now if you go to some uh, hardware stores or uh, dollar stores, you can actually find contact cement that is cheaper. It's not the best quality stuff, but I used uh, dollar store contact cement for like this. Uh, for this guy and a ton of other pieces that I've done so far and as far as I can see so far none of it's falling apart so that being said as much as barge is probably your best bet it's not your only option um, the only thing is a lot of them unlike barge don't come with their own brush so you kind of have to improvise here so I want to brush it on lightly and because it's a contact cement specifically, you are going to have to do it to both sides of your piece. Any piece that you're attaching, you need to do it to both sides. Now, you don't want to get this stuff all over the place. Um, so that's the nice thing about having a brush. Is I'm going to apply this nicely. Now, you can make your own glue pot. You can buy glue pots online. If you're going to be working a ton like this, is this is the start of your your cosplay journey or making tons of props for your children kind of thing. Um, either investing in actually picking up barge or picking up a glue pot, which you can find on Amazon. And uh, if I get a chance to, I might end up with uh, links for some of this stuff, specifically the stuff that I talked about in the video and other stuff that would be good to have. And I'll post uh, links to potentially be able to get some of this stuff like on Amazon and stuff like that down below. Um, don't quote me on that yet, because at the time of this video, I haven't had a chance to do that. But it might be uh, something that I put as a later addition to the video. So if you're coming back to this video to to take a look at how I did the Minecraft sword and uh, to get some inspiration for something that you want to do next, uh, hopefully those links will be up at that time. So and I'll have something an annotated probably at the end of the video to say, hey, yeah, the links are are finally up. Um, so you guys can check that out. So you want thin layers. It doesn't need to be really thick layers to do its job because you actually want it to be partially dry before you actually apply it to the other piece. So I'm going to apply these pieces and I'm going to talk about something else while I wait for these pieces to be ready to put together. So, uh, cause it takes about, oh, about 10 minutes, give or take, or you should wait close to 10 minutes. 
be from the time you applied it to the time that you're uh, you're actually sticking them together because then it's probably at its driest without having to apply a new layer and it's going to actually have your best bond so anybody that uh, has already worked with contact cement already that's watching this video something you'll notice if you haven't let the contact cement dry and you're doing a more advanced shape so let's say you're doing a helmet or uh, attaching two pieces to make a dome or a shoulder piece or anything uh, similar to that you're gonna uh, you find that if you haven't applied or let the uh, contact cement dry enough you'll actually find that the two pieces will not have their full bond and it'll actually look like it's slightly coming apart it's still contacting but it's not a hundred percent right on there so you want to be in a, uh, a better situ uh, you want to have it give it the maximum of time so what I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna apply these in here so this is actually gonna make my foam probably bulge a little bit once the pieces are together but not so much that it's actually going to negatively affect the piece as long as I don't let it stack too much on itself so I'm just gonna apply just a little bit more Um, and go from there. Alright, there we go. So now we're going to let those two dry over here, just up here. And, uh, so the next step will, uh, from this will be, uh, to do any of my finishing sanding. Like, right now, the, um, and it depends on how, how much time you've got, how much, uh, and how, who you're doing this for, largely, too. So if you're just doing it for one of the kids, I mean, you probably don't have to have a, a perfect finished product kind of thing. So, you know, if they're just doing it for Halloween, they want, they want it to be uh, Steve from Minecraft kind of thing. This is something that you can kind of quickly slap together. You don't really need to do uh, too much expen extensive on the uh, on the finishing and the sanding because you want it uh, it's fine looking a little rough. And then the next step is going to be priming it to get ready for paint. Now, I can paint directly on the foam. That's not an issue. That's something I can just do, but you kind of want to prime it so that it's uh, sometimes it, it ends up uh, getting a lot smoother finish, depending on what you're looking at. And, and this one I could actually probably uh, paint directly on. Now you can use a couple of different types of paints on it because this is something that's not intended to be bending a lot. Um, you could actually spray paint this, and that's actually what I'm going to do to do the base coat for this. Is I'm going to spray paint it, um, and you can get spray paints that are a prime slash finish. You want to pick up acrylic uh, as best you can. Acrylic. So far I found works the best and it uh, suffers the best. So, and I'm gonna prime it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a uh, stone sword. I'm not gonna do a diamond sword. Uh, that I'll, I'll maybe uh, do a whole set of these guys and I'll show these uh, this on Instagram or Facebook and you guys can see a full set of Minecraft swords or other uh, Minecraft accessories done in all the different material types uh, as far as the paint job goes. Uh, but I'm just going to do a, uh, a nice base, uh, base gray, and then I'm going to paint my highlights on. So I'm going to do base gray, and that's going to do all my edging, and then I'm going to actually, using uh, some painter's tape and the whole like, I'm going to do all of the uh, detail work just to get that, that final finished look. So that's, uh, so there, uh, there ends that one. So that one's a, a, a relatively a fairly simple paint job. But when you start looking at stuff like this, guys, so, uh, first step is going to be your, uh, I'll run through your steps again. So your first step is going to be making your template, uh, source images if you can, or if you're just doing a, your kid wants to be a knight, uh, say for example, or a ninja or whatever, just a, a rough sketch of whatever it's going to be. Uh, will work. Admittedly, I used no template for this one. I just got the rough uh, length that I wanted and then just drew in onto my uh, my balsa wood the rough shape. Because I have a general idea how a tanto looks like, so I don't really need to sit there and dig up source and after source image after source image. But if your kid says they want to do a Minecraft sword, uh, having a source image doesn't hurt to have. Uh, same thing with, uh, with doing shields. So I mean, this guy, I grabbed the source image for the shield, and away I went. So, 
then it's uh, once your pattern uh, or template has been created, then you can apply it to whatever material you're working with. Like I said, there's a ton of materials to work with uh, if you're working on a budget or if you've got a bit of money to spare, depending on, uh, on what you want to do. Some material is going to last longer. Like once this stuff is painted, primed and finished or whatever, these guys can take a fair bit of abuse without having to be touched up or anything like that. Certain other materials takes a little bit more. So one of the things I'm going to show on a later video is I'm going to actually show other uh, cheap stuff that I can play with. Uh, that I can use to uh, do, say, a cardboard sword and have it have a metallic finish without actually having to paint. So, uh, kind of work with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply this guy. So when you're applying this contact cement, you don't want to have to try to pull this stuff back off. So you're going to want to be very, very careful that you are getting exactly where you want your piece to end up. Alright, so I want to make sure I'm sticking each part of this right where I want it to because I'm not going to be able to take this off to do this again. There's no go backsies on this. Okay. Alright, now that the piece is mostly applied, I'm now going to push this down to get, get that contact. So I want to push it down. Um, and get all of that contact in because once it's made contact it is done all right so there we go. and it's actually not sticking out too much uh, I was expecting it to stick out a whole lot more where I've got the sword supported but if you notice this look at that nice it'll flop a bit if you shake it around but just by throwing that uh, tie wire in or coat hanger in you've now got a mostly rigid sword the handle is a little floppy but that's it. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna prime and paint this stuff. And when I come back, I will show you the finished product. Have fun guys, stay tuned. All right, so we're back and I've finished up doing the base and the paint. So there you go, there's, there's the look of it. Now I actually kind of screwed up here. I ended up having this backwards from what it should have been. And I still have to do this little handle bit, but I will finish that. I kind of half did it. I haven't finished the whole piece. But, so there you go. There's a Minecraft sword all painted up. Um, and yeah, that's all it really takes to do that. Now, truth be told, this took a little while because I was uh, very being trying to be as precise as I can to get those lines nice and sharp. And it doesn't look perfect, but... You know, I think uh, I think my uh, my son will enjoy it either way. So all I got to do after that is apply this once this paint is all finished, and that should protect all the paint from coming off and things like that. I mean, I could clean up my lines a little better uh, on the edges and get that nice and sharp, but I'm not too worried about with him. So that's a Minecraft sword right there uh, from uh, co basic concept to uh, finish build. And well, uh, as of recording this, this took me less than a day to do, uh, including letting it sit, having to deal with some other stuff, having my friends come over and hang out and all that kind of stuff. This took me, well, it's like a 9, almost 10 p.m. right now. And I started somewhere earlier in the day. And uh, even still, all truth all be told, I think this took a grand total of probably four, maybe five hours to do. So it doesn't take a horrible, uh, overly excessive amount of time to do something like this, very simple, that your kids will enjoy for, who knows, maybe months at a time and be constantly talking, oh, hey, my dad did this, my mom did this. So if you're looking at something very straightforward, if you want to see more stuff like this, if you want to see more little tutorials about little things that you can create, whether it be uh, weapons, armor, other little uh, fun things to play with that either your kids or yourself can use, whether it's for cosplay, whether it's for Halloween costume parties, whatever. Uh, let me know in the comments below about what you thought of the video. Give me a like if you really enjoyed the video, if it helped out. Um, head over to my Instagram, head over to my Facebook, and let me know what kind of stuff you guys want to see. Because if you want to see more little crafting projects like this, I'd be more than willing to put them up and uh, put them on YouTube for you guys to check out and reference back to uh, should you want to do something similar to this. And if you want to see a specific thing made, let me know in the comments as well, and that way I can go, oh, hey, well, I've made this. Or if you want to see the actual build and finish to do this, I can do this again. And I can do it with other materials. Do you want to see it done in cardboard? Do you want to see it done in hard insulation foam? Well, I can do that as well. So, you know, nice fancy uh, sword here. Yeah, I could improve it, and odds are if I do the next one, you'll see that. If you want to see a finished build done in balsa wood, also head on over to let me know. 
Uh, stay tuned for me posting the links where you can get a lot of this material online if you aren't able to get it uh, in local stores or if you want to see me also do uh, you know lists uh, uh, lists and trips and stuff to hardware stores and stuff like that to look at material look at what it costs and what kind of stuff you can find or other creative items that you can use to create various props and uh, and pieces that everybody's going to enjoy and check out also let me know hope you guys enjoyed checking this video out hope to see you guys again soon and remember to have fun keep gaming and on top of that keep crafting keep making stuff see you guys later